Ever since I can remember, I've enjoyed listening to stories. I like listening to my mother's childhood stories or the one when she first met my father. I now tell my daughters about my childhood and the experience of holding them for the first time. So why do I collect oral history? Because I believe that everyone has a story to tell. A story that connects us, that challenges us, that inspires us, and that is worth listening to. When I set out to collect oral narratives of Latinos in Ohio, I thought I would encounter similar stories of homesickness, cultural shock, and language struggles. And I've heard all of that. But I've also heard inspiring stories of people deeply invested in their community by way of activism, education, policymaking, faith, and outreach. I've heard stories that at times are very touching for me, my students, and participants themselves. The questions I ask are not controversial, and I never ask participants to describe a traumatic story or event. Yet, a simple question such as, what is your proudest moment? Or, tell me about one of the most important people in your life can trigger tender, sweet, and sometimes sad memories. I never imagined that I would share such raw emotional moments with participants. I had to prepare for that. The interviews I conduct are not rehearsed, and although I give participants the right not to answer uncomfortable questions, the stories I document are spontaneous life experiences that inform us about life in the 60s to the present, and the efforts of many to preserve and educate others about their home culture or about how people specifically chose Ohio to raise a family and start a business, and about how some, like me, can no longer tell the story of their life without making Ohio the center. This oral history project tells us about adapting to a new region and dealing with the first winter for those of us that came from warmer climates. It tells us about how faith helped them find hope and inspired them to help others. Occasionally, it uncovers experiences of racism, rejection, and pain. Some of these stories are unique to Latinos living in Ohio, but many are common experiences of love, faith, work, family, and traditions. Anna, one of the women I interviewed, helped put words to my own experience of living in between when she said, Es una muy buena pregunta. Creo que ahora, después de muchísimos años, podría decir que, que Ohio es reconciliación, es healing. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. No estoy segura si hubiese dicho lo mismo hace años atrás. Mm -hmm. Pero yeah. llega un momento en la vida en que se acepta el este vivir partido en, uh -huh. en no sé cuántos pedazos pero cuando uno se da cuenta que que como podría decirlo que healing no sé si es la palabra es un regalo que está escondido en la pena uh -huh. <risa> que entonces te, te, te hace sentir que el espacio donde vives es una, un, un reflejo de quién eres tú como persona ¿no? I've traveled all around Ohio and plan to continue to film those willing to tell me about their lives through this experience, I have met wonderful people and listened to amazing stories that will have an impact in our lives well beyond this project. I hope that through these stories, I am able to facilitate and encourage a mutual understanding of other cultures. This project is not finished. There is room for you to tell your story. It is my hope that the relationships and scholarship that comes out of this collection will continue to document the past and the future of Latino life in the Midwest. Turner.